What's up guys, we are back with another Masters of the Universe review, but we are not talking Mattel today, we are talking about, well I guess the only other company anymore that is producing figures. We have got the latest Mondo 1-6 scale figure. These things are always so big, they're such a pain to kind of lug around when I do these. So we've got Man at Arms today. This is finally the second good guy that we've gotten. We've gotten a decent amount of figures out of this line, but only one good guy so far. We've only gotten He-Man, and the rest have just been, well, Scareglow, Faker, a million Skeletors, uh, Merman, things like that. Now, I'm excited about bad guys, but it's nice to kind of get He-Man a little bit more help. So we've got him in the same style packaging uh, that He-Man comes in. So the uh, gray skull slip cover here, all the others have been Snake Mountain. So you've got all the green gray skull bricks all over the place. You've got the jaw bridge, pop that guy off right there. And then you've got the big box on the inside. This is of course the exclusive version as well. So the, the one you pay like five bucks more and then you get an extra piece. So the one you should be buying unless you simply miss out. Uh, so we've got Man at Arms here and he's got a black and orange motif as far as the color scheme. They all kind of change based on the character. Got a really awesome shot of Man at Arms there on the front. And then there is a color shot on the back. Fantastic artwork. I dig everything about this presentation. And it does have a magnetic clasp for the, uh, for the kind of book of it here. And then you've got a shot of the Grayskull logo here. There's a little bit of a write-up and then you've got Man at Arms here in the big window. Of course it's all able to be taken out and put back in so it's very collector friendly. Presentation on the packaging is always top-notch and it is uh, no different here. So let's do it. Let's pull our mustachioed man out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our Mondo 1-6 scale Man at Arms figure. Probably one of my more anticipated figures for at least a little bit now. He is, uh, visually speaking, quite striking and just the overall package is pretty well crammed. He is really familiar territory I suppose when it comes to construction, articulation, things like that just because of the fact that this is basically He-Man with a bunch of armor on him. That's fine as far as the overall toy goes. I have no issues with that. It makes perfect sense from a toy making standpoint. It does however present a few issues when it comes to moving this guy around. Not in a hugely negative sense just in the fact that well it's a figure that has a lot of armor on it, so of course it's going to be different. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. You've got a head, at least this head, because he does have an unhelmeted head, that cannot look up, but he does look down. Pretty good. Not much tilt, again, because of the helmet, but you do a full rotation side to side. The arms on this guy can go out pretty much perpendicular, even with that armor. And then you've got full rotation, but it is hindered by the shoulder pad here. There is a bicep swivel there. You do have a single jointed elbow, and then you've got your uh, wrist rotation because these are ball hinges, and you do have the hinge in there, but this hand has that gauntlet, and he has this piece right here that sits over top of it, so of course that gets in the way. It really stops him from hinging outward if you've got the ball facing that way. The other arm does of course not have that issue, so you can hinge up and down of course, and then you can fully rotate with no issues. The torso is fully rotating, no issues there, but he doesn't really do much else. No tilt side to side, nothing really forward or backward, and I'm sure you can understand why, because he is basically one giant brick because of the fact that he has this armor on now. Now I'm perfectly fine with that because he does look so good, but at the same time, it is an area where he is very much less dynamic than a normal figure, simply because he just happens to have so much business really over top of the frame of the figure. Now from the waist down, he is close to normal to the other figures because again, more stuff here. So you've got legs that can go out about that far and then they can kick forward basically about this far. You do have to twist them to get them to go fully out and then they do kick backwards slightly. There is a ball up there so you can twist pretty much all the way around, not fully, but almost. You do have your double jointed knees up here and they go back pretty good, even for this really humongous knee pad. And that is one area where things do, of course, hinder a little bit. There is rotation at those knees as well. And then these are He-Man ankles. So they're like the one area where I really don't care for these because he has no forward hinge at the ankle. It's just all back. And I really don't like that. There is, of course, rocker there as well. But the hinge forward is definitely a negative for me. And he's even got moving armor here to accommodate for what could have been a forward hinge, but he still does not. It's only backwards, it's no forward uh, articulation on those ankles. So he does move 
decently. He's certainly not as mobile as some of the other figures in this line. Granted, these aren't the most dynamic figures anyway, but Man at Arms is, I should say at this point, the least mobile of the bunch, but at the same time, it's taken within the confines of the fact that he is the Man at Arms, and he has this massive suit of armor that none of the other figures have to deal with. Visually, though, striking is the best way to describe this guy. I mean, just look at this thing. It is so, so detailed. He just looks perfect. And I don't want to throw that word around unnecessarily or without cause, but he looks pretty perfect. I really don't have any, any gripes or issues with the end result on this figure, save for maybe one, and it's more of a nitpick than anything else, and we'll kind of get to that. But this figure, I mean, from a construction standpoint, I think is pretty beautiful. The amount of detail that has gone into the armor is just over the top. I mean, everything is weathered and dirty and nasty, and you've got all these scrapes and nicks and cuts and gouges and all of the paint wear that's all over this. Tons of, you know, kind of technology all over his body, for lack of a better term, because he's always got all these kind of like bits and bobs and doodads all over his armor. And that comes through really, really well here. You've got the, the uh, harnesses on the back for his weapon storage. You've got the big monster belt here, which has that incredibly well-detailed buckle on here. I mean, there's black wash and gray wash and silver wash and all kinds of dry brushing that has been covered in there to bring out all the little details all over that thing. I really, really dig the gauntlet on the forearm, despite the fact that this does hinder this hand. I really, really like the, des the design. I like the elbow pad. And of course, the big asymmetrical shoulder pad is a huge, huge favorite of mine when it comes to this figure. And, you know, a lot of figures in general, I dig the asymmetrical look. Uh, I, of course, love the kind of faux leather uh, crotch piece that he has here. You could uh, pop this off, I'm sure. I'm not in the position to really be taking this one apart because I don't want to deal with all of the armor on this one, but it is most certainly a separate piece, just like all the others. So you could take that off if you want, but I really like this one here. You've got all these little kind of like fake rivets in there. And then we've got my one little kind of gripe on this figure is the holster. You have to put this on and it is a separate piece uh, right here. And just putting this on was a huge chore for me. And maybe it's just me being me, but these straps did not really want to cooperate. And I'm not exactly happy with how they look on the leg, but the holster is really nice. And it's overly detailed. Honestly, it has maybe too much detail for just being a holster. And then you've got the big, uh, you know, kind of like monster shin guard down here with the foot guard on it. And again, it's more of that really nice orange detail with the silver uh, battle wear all over it. And then of course, another asymmetrical design with the just furry boot. And you've got that kind of fake fur that we've seen. This is the same thing that He-Man has, I believe. Uh, and then the, the normal foot down here as far as just the, the wraps and the standard boot. But it's all about the armor for this guy. I mean, it's man at arms. That's his thing. That's one of his hallmarks is his Stark orange armor. And there's just so much detail crammed into it. Various layers of paint, various colors. There's just a lot of paint operations on this figure uh, that make him kind of stand out from a lot of the others because, I mean, take He-Man, for example. He doesn't have nearly this level of detail on him. Skeletor and, you know, Faker, Merman definitely is up there, but taken as far as the other good guy that we've gotten so far, Man-at-Arms is just through the roof when it comes to detail and overall level of complexity when it comes to the figure. So I think Mondo did a really, really great job of just piecing this guy together, using a bunch of influences to make their version of Man-at-Arms. And then, of course, he is topped off with what I think is, well, of the three, the best Man-at-Arms head sculpt. Because like I said, there is another head sculpt, but it's an unhelmeted one. And for me, it's always this look when it comes to Man at Arms. There's always a helmet on him, and it's just the, pre the preference, really. It's not to take away from that other head sculpt. It's just that this is the one I want. So you've got tons of detail all over it, all kinds of fantastic paint applications, that deep blue with a lot of that silver dry brushing for the wear and the tear, and all the little techno nonsense that's all over the helmet, little bits and bobs and bobbles all over it that make it kind of a quintessential Man at Arms look. And then you've got, just like He-Man, a much more realistic look and expression on the face. He looks very much more battle-hardened, a little bit more no-nonsense, and, you know, Man-at-Arms is no pushover, so I'm really happy that they gave him this kind of stern look. But it's all about the mustache for this guy, the big, bushy mustache, because that's Man-at-Arms. He's never been a non-mustachioed man to me. It's not Duncan without the mustache. I'm really glad they decided to go that route, uh, and I think they did a fantastic job with this head sculpt. It might be 
outside of Merman right now, it might be my favorite head sculpt. It's definitely my preference when it comes to the good guys, because, you know, we've only got He-Man so far outside of Man-at-Arms, but I think they really killed it with the head sculpt to top off an otherwise exceptional looking action figure. Now, as far as accessories go, Man-at-Arms would not live up to his name if he did not come with a lot of stuff. And this guy comes with just that. He comes with a lot of stuff. So to start with, we're going to talk about, well, I guess the things that I've done to change him up. So you've got the aforementioned extra head sculpt here, and he does have an extra pair of goggles. It's Man at Arms. He is the armorer. He's the tinkerer. He is the creator. He's the armorer. He's the blacksmith when it comes to Motu. So he's got his work goggles. And these are a separate, these are a separate piece. You can actually pop them off. They've got a little elastic, elastic band there. It helps him to stay on. And then you've got his unhelmeted head. But he does come with the loose helmet. And you can actually put this over top. I would advise you to not do that because, frankly, there is no real reason to. Because, you know, you get this head anyway. So while the expression is slightly different, it's not exactly the same, you're likely just to muck up your head if you start doing this. And you've got the, uh, the mohawk hair, which I really, really like on this guy. So the sculpt is fantastic, paintwork is really good, and then of course you just have the other option. Now I've, I've done a few other things to the figure as well. So you've got the uh, armband here. It's just done with an, an elastic band as well, so you can slide it on and off. And then we've got some weaponry on him also already. So you've got the blaster down here in the holster, and we saw this with He-Man, right? So this is like the movie gun. Uh, so you've got the blaster here, and then we've got some other stuff on his back. We saw all this stuff with He-Man as well, and you can pop, I don't know if you're supposed to be able to do this, but I can pop this off on mine, and it's really necessary, so I'm sure it is, to get the uh, the actual blaster rifle. So this is like weapons rack gun. And then you've got the sword, and this also came with He-Man, and this just sort of slides in there. So this is also one that I'm pretty sure came with He-Man. Standard blade, regular handle, and then you've got silver metallic paint with a lot of wear and tear and nicks and cuts all over that thing. So you've got You've got a lot of weaponry options as far as just kind of generic stuff there. And then we've got a little bit more specific stuff. So we've got this big guy right here, his massive, absolutely massive shield. And it's like a big mechanical carapace almost. It's humongous. I mean, it's bigger than the torso of the figure itself. You can see how much room it takes up. It's got a handle on the back with a nice kind of leather design. And then you've got tons of paintwork all over it. So various shades of orange and red, and then a lot of that battle damage, the nicks and cuts, the, sh the design and the overall sculpt on this, I think is really fantastic. Again, it very much looks like like a carapace, like a an insect shell or like a lobster shell or something like that. But of course it's, it's made of metal, or in this case, not metal, but you know what I mean. You get the idea and it's very techno. It's very, uh, very man at arms look. So I really do like that. It's a very defining characteristic of the figure. We've got, let's see, what else do we have here? We've got his mace. So this thing is pretty crazy and it packs an interesting uh, feature here that I didn't know about. So you've got a little wrap here. So he's got uh, kind of like his belt. It's got those faux rivets on there. Tons of weathering, tons of detail. This thing is really heavy. So you are gonna have to play a game of uh, balance to get him to hold it correctly, unfortunately. But there is so much going on here. Tons of, you know, kind of techno nonsense hull up in there. Tons of wires and tubing and things like that. And then you've got the big mallet on the top here. But twist it and it'll unlock. And within it, you've got this. So there is a ball and chain on the inside of his mace. And this is part of why it's so heavy, because this is fully, you know, sculpted and it's solid. And then you've got a chain and you can kind of lock it back in if you push it in there. So that is really awesome. Huge surprise. And once you get it in his hand where he's kind of like twirling that almost, he just looks too cool, basically. So that's that's a good little surprise there. We do have some extra hands for Man at Arms. So he's got uh, the fists in the box, I think, unless I changed it without paying attention. And then we've got some other stuff. So you've got a set of, let's see, we've got some trigger finger hands here, because of course he does come with guns. He has got a set of normal gripping hands. And then you've got a right hand pointing finger when he's giving He-Man a stern lecture. And then you've got a right hand, uh, kind of open palm, flat palm, or maybe karate chop style of action hand, which works really well. And then since this guy is the exclusive version, he does have some extra stuff. And frankly, at this point, I don't remember what is actually exclusive to this set, but we're gonna talk about the two kind of oddity accessories when it comes to this guy. So he does have an extra head sculpt. You have got the Snake Man at Arms head sculpt. This thing almost made me wanna get a second one of these. I can't really justify it for how expensive this is, 
but look at that thing, it's crazy. So you got a snake man head in there, all of the nastiness inside the mouth, the teeth, those reptilian eyes, and then you've got his helmet again, done up in a fantastic paint job, great sculpt, but of course, very different idea when it comes to the overall character here. So this thing is just a great little bonus if you wanna change him up just to be a little bit different on your shelf. And then we've got, you know, one of the fun little accessories that they always throw in here. So you've got the Orco in the pot. And I really like this one, uh, mostly because I'm not too concerned about this one breaking. My daughter has broken some of the other stuff. She broke uh, Relay and uh, whatever comes with He-Man. I can't remember his name at this point. I never can. She broke both of them. So this one hopefully won't break because he's not too flimsy. And he looks really good. He looks very angry. He looks really annoyed or sneaky or whatever he's trying to do. So this is our first little taste of Orko, I think, in this line, right? We haven't gotten any other Orko accessories. So this is really cool. It's a really fun little goofy thing. So he does come with a whole bunch of stuff. And this is the part of the review where I always spend way too much time gushing over how much stuff these things come with. But Man at Arms really is stacked, and he lives up to his name as far as just having all kinds of cool accessories and tons of options when it comes to how you want to display this guy. So, yeah, at the end of the day, this is a really, really solid figure. I'd say he is number two in the line for me, just narrowly behind Merman at this point, because there's really nothing to complain about on this figure for me, except for the fact that putting that holster on him was just somewhat of a chore for me. And again, that could just be me being me, but it was slightly annoying to have to deal with that. Otherwise, he looks fantastic. He comes with a tremendous array of awesome accessories. I love the little Orko. I love the Snake Man at Arm's Head. The shield is so just imposing and menacing. I love the fact that the tip of the mace comes out and is a ball on a chain. There's just so many things to play around with when it comes to this figure that ultimately you're probably going to overlook the fact that he's not as mobile as a lot of the other figures due to his armor. What it's going to come down to is the fact that he looks amazing on your shelf with all of the rest of this line, and he's definitely going to be a, uh, a focal point for your collection because Man at Arms is a bit of a stunner. I think anybody who gets their hands on this one is going to be very, very happy. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mondo Toys 1-6 scale exclusive Man at Arms. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.